In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you ever played peekaboo with a baby? You know the game, right? Like you put your hands up in front of your face, or you put your hands up in front of the eyes of the baby, and you say peekaboo, and you bring your hands down, and it's like you've done a magic trick. Like the baby is mesmerized, like you appeared out of nowhere. Peekaboo is actually really important in the development of a child. It teaches them something that we take for granted, but it's very important. It's a thing called object permanence. It's the idea that a thing continues to be there even if you don't see it, right? Like if I close my eyes, you all continue to exist. If you close your eyes, I continue to exist. At the end of liturgy today, I go to my house, you go to your house, I have no idea where you are or what you're up to, and yet, you exist. Things continue to exist to be true even if we can't see them. Things continue to be true even if we don't understand them. And I raise that because this is what we're celebrating today on the second Sunday of Great Lent, which is dedicated to St. Gregory Palamas. And he gave us kind of a theological application of that truth, this tension that we live in as Christians. That God is both knowable and not knowable at the same time. This gets into some complicated theological language. He's knowable in his energies, in the way that he acts in the world, in the way that he reveals himself in the world, the things that he does in the world. But he's unknowable in his essence, his core mystery of who he is. He's both. God is distant and yet here. God is completely beyond us and yet right next to us. God is completely unknowable and yet, at the same time, knowable. And St. Gregory Palamas, speaking from the tradition of the Church, tells us that to know God is not simply this mental, abstract, academic, philosophical thing. We don't know God simply by thinking about Him. We don't know God simply by having interesting ideas about Him. We know God by communing with Him. We know God by becoming like Him. We know God by walking with Him. Which is actually the lesson that we see in today's Gospel reading as well. If you think back to today's reading, picture a house. Jesus is in this tiny little house, preaching, teaching to the people. He's got a reputation at this point, so the house is full. It's crammed, shoulder to shoulder. No masks, pre-COVID, I know, right? Just crammed people, different than our current context. And outside this house, trying to get in, is a group of friends. There's a guy who's paralyzed. He's being carried by four friends. We have no idea how far they carried him, but they lugged him through the Middle Eastern heat for a chance to speak to the Lord, and they get there, and the house is full. But so great is their faith in God, so great is their love for their friend, that they take their friend, they somehow get him onto the roof of this house, they punch a hole in the ceiling, in the roof, and then let their friend down. And when he's there at the feet of Jesus, the Lord sees him, and he says, looking at the faith of their friends, he says, the faith of your friends has made you well. Your sins are forgiven. And it's interesting, right? They don't get angry hearing this. They don't get angry hearing that the Lord sees this man and he doesn't raise him from his bed. He doesn't heal his legs. He doesn't heal his back. He doesn't make him not a paralytic anymore. He forgives his sins, and they're fine with this. They don't complain. These people of great faith who carried their friend, who knows how far, who lugged him onto a roof, punched a hole in the roof. They wanted an encounter with God, and they got it. And their friend was forgiven of his sins. But there's other people in the room as well, scribes, who are smarty pantses of the law back then. Thought they knew a heck of a, of a lot about the law, and they see this, and they immediately balk. They immediately get angry. And they think nobody can forgive sins except for God. How is any of this possible? This is nonsense. And Jesus, who is God, of course, true God of true God, they don't have to verbalize a thing. He's able to perceive in their hearts the doubts and the questions and the anger that they are feeling. And he tells them, so that you can know that this is true, so that you can see what cannot be seen, I'm going to do this for you. Not for the paralyzed man, who was totally fine walking away from here with just forgiveness of sins and legs that still didn't work. I'm doing it for you. 
who were grumbling at what you, what you saw because you couldn't see. Because how can we see forgiveness of sins? How can we understand the mystery that this man who was standing before us is actually the divine son of, son of God? We can't. It's beyond us. It's beyond what we can wrap our mind around. But Jesus tells them, so you can have a sense of what you can't understand, I'm going to give you something that you can understand. And he looks to the paralytic and he says, rise, take up your pallet, and walk. And while the healing of sins, the forgiveness of sins, is this invisible thing that we can't see, we can't understand, God gives us something real and concrete that we can see. And this man gets up, and he walks away. And the point for all of us here in the second Sunday of Great Lent, as we're preparing this difficult road that we have ahead of us, as we're pre preparing for the cross, as we're preparing for the resurrection, is to walk with the freedom and the forgiveness that God gives us. Because that is how we know Him. That is how we draw closer to Him. God gives us this incredible gift. We're Christians. We've been baptized. We've been chrismated. We've been given the gift of being brought into the household of God. Our identity comes from Him. Our life comes from Him. And all He asks in return is, walk with me. Get up and walk with me. Leave behind the things that paralyze you. Leave behind the things that give you anger, the things that give you frustration, the things that separate you from your neighbor, the grudges that you hold, the inner sort of dirt, turmoil and demons that you're holding on. Leave those behind. Walk in the freedom that I give you. Walk with me as I show you how to be merciful. Walk with me as I show you how to be compassionate. Walk with me as I show you how to be patient. Walk with me on this journey of the Great Lent as we pray a little bit more as we fast a little bit more, as we give a little bit more to the poor and needy in our midst, as we develop a heart that is open, not closed, a heart that rejoices in the, in the life and the action of God, rather than is blind to it, a heart that is open and free to move to God, away from our sins, away from our addictions, away from the things that glue us to the ground. This is the grace that God gives us and the opportunity. And to know God, to walk with Him in this way, is to know Him better than any philosopher could. Because to walk with Him, He's there, personal. He's somebody who we can look upon. He's somebody who continues to bless us, somebody who loves us. Not just ideas floating around in our minds, not just words on a page, not just a thing that, that happened 2,000 years ago, but a reality. Because we can see God and know God no less than that paralyzed man. We can be healed by God, no less than that paralyzed man. It's a really wonderful divine game of peekaboo. God has showed his face to us. He brings his hands down, we can look him in the face. We can see the way he loves us. We can see the life that he has for us. And all he asks is for us to leave the things of death, leave the things of sin behind, and walk with him. May God gives us the strength to walk with him, as we take our next steps through Great Lent, as we prepare to celebrate his cross and the life that he has for all of us in his resurrection. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.